Richard Feynman was known as the Great Explainer, and his diagrams were an imaginative way to explain what's happening in particle interactions. This video is going to go through just some examples of them, explain how you can interpret them. But also it's going to give you examples of interactions based on the fundamental forces. So you should also see this as being about the fundamental forces. A Feynman diagram is essentially a graph, and like all graphs it's got two axes. And on this axis, it's a bit odd because on this axis is normally where we put time. And on this one we put space. Basically though, all we're saying is that the Feynman diagram is going to show what is happening in space-time. Okay, it's going to say that, for example, this is one of the simplest ones, this particle here, we don't normally just draw it, this particle here is going to move from that point in space-time to this point in space-time. There's going to be an interaction with this particle here, which is going to move from that point in space-time to this point in space-time. Fine. How are they going to interact? Well, that depends on the particle, doesn't it? Let's say that we've got a pair of protons. Well, how are they going to interact? Well, like charges repel, so they are going to move away from one another. From this point in space-time to these points in space-time. How are they interacting? Well, they're interacting electromagnetically. So they're interacting by means of a photon. And this is the symbol in a Feynman diagram for a photon. It's a, it's a wiggly line. It's like a wave, I suppose, is the way to remember it, isn't it? OK, and it's a, a photon that's not actually going to be observed. So we call it a virtual photon. So this is one of the simplest Feynman diagrams for the electromagnetic interaction. OK, and it would be a similar situation. Let's say they weren't protons, but they were uh, a proton-electron. It would be a similar situation, but obviously the force, the, the outcome would be different because they wouldn't be repelling. So normally the Feynman diagram just looks something simple like that. We don't actually show the axes, but you need to remember it is just a diagrammatic representation of what is going on between these pairs of particles, or more than that, or more particles in space and time. Now, next interaction is going to be the strong nuclear, another one of the four fundamental forces. Strong nuclear exists between any two fermions, and they all feel it. So, let's say, for example, uh, let's say I've got an up quark and another up quark. Okay, coming from this point in space-time to the same point in time, slightly apart in space. They're going to interact. You may remember the gauge boson for the strong nuclear is the gluon. And the gluons have a funny squiggly line like that as their kind of symbol for their interaction. And often you'll see it uh, with its symbol for the gauge boson gluon to indicate that this exchange of force is happening by the strong nuclear and carried by the boson, the gluon. Okay, pretty simple stuff so far. You could also have a pair of downs or the same thing would be the case if it was a proton and a neutron being bound together Oops, being bound together in the nucleus. Lastly, we're going to talk about the weak nuclear. Remember, we can't draw a diagram, Feynman diagram for gravity, because we don't know if there's a gauge boson that actually causes gravity that uh, is responsible for that interaction. We just can observe the effects of gravity. So the weak nuclear force, uh, remember I have said before at some point in some of these videos that weak nuclear is responsible for nuclear decay or uh, nuclear reactions. And I'm going to talk to you about beta minus and beta plus. Okay, so I'm going to draw a 
diagram for each one. Just remember that time is, I'm going to show you the axes again, uh, time is going upwards in the uh, positive direction and space is going from left to right. And that's x, y, z of space, in three dimensions of space. Okay, uh, well, let's talk about beta minus. Beta minus, you'll remember, is a, you should know this from your higher GCSE, a neutron turns into a proton plus an electron plus a anti-electron neutrino. Well, you wouldn't have remembered the anti-electron neutrino, but you will have talked about the neutron decays into a proton plus an electron, or a beta minus, I could have written there. Well, okay, well, what's actually happening then on the uh, quark level is that a down is turning into a up plus the electron, plus the anti-electron neutrino. So um, we, we're going to draw the uh, diagram in terms of the quarks this time, rather than just the the higher level, the baryons. There's also some energy come, comes out, and that is in the form of electromagnetic radiation, and that's some of the energy that's accounted for. And this is why you rarely get beta on its own. You often get beta with gamma as well. Okay. So we're starting with a down, there it comes. It's going to interact weakly. It's going to do a weak nuclear interaction. And the symbol for the weak nuclear is a dotted line. What's it going to become on this side? Well, it's going to become an up quark. And it's going to decay into, on this side, an electron and a anti-electron neutrino. Now here's where it gets slightly tricky because we actually draw antimatter arrows the opposite way to which they're moving and that just helps us identify that they are antimatter. Uh, so there you go, it's just a rule you're going to have to learn. But you know it's coming from this reaction because you know that's, that time is going in this direction. So you, it's not going backwards in time. Okay, so that's beta minus. I should just say as well that we know that the weak nuclear is carried by the W plus, the W minus, or the Z naught. And we can actually work out which one of these is causing this interaction here. Uh, you just have to think which direction the charge going. So the um, down is negative. There's minus a third to plus a third. So a whole integer one charge is moving in this direction. So it's got to be the W minus which is causing this. And that is then causing, look, over here we've got a minus one charge. So we know it's got to be W minus. In beta plus, well, we're actually getting an up quark decaying into a down plus a positron plus an electron neutrino. Um, you've got antimatter and matter and previously you had matter and antimatter and they're always going to uh, be created in equal amounts. So here this time we've got the up beginning the whole thing. That on this side, the quark side, is going to turn into a down. We've got our weak interaction by a dotted line. We've got the positron coming from it and we've got the electron neutrino and once again, because the positron is antimatter, we draw the arrow going the opposite direction to what the direction that would actually be moving. Now, which charge is going this way? Which charge is moving off in this direction? It's positive charge. So it's going to be a W plus boson that's carrying that interaction. Well, I hope that helps. For some of you, that's just going to be a way to visualize this and understand these interactions. For some of you, though, you're going to need to know and be able to draw those simple uh, find the diagrams for your exam syllabus. Best of luck. Let me know how you go. And don't forget all the ads, please.